Top 5 Tips for Writers. You need to hear this. Hi, I'm Joshua, and this is Miko with Deep Dive Publishers. We help aspiring authors pen, publish, and promote a best-selling book. Now that we have the clickbait out of the way, we can actually get to the video. First, I'll reference one of our previous videos and ask you a simple question. Are you interested in writing a book, or are you committed? The difference is if you're interested in writing a book, you're going to come up with excuses. You will have other things get in your way, you'll be too busy, you'll be too tired, and a few months or years down the road, you'll find that you've still not finished your book. But if you're committed to writing your book, you're going to make it happen. Whether snow or shine whether or not you are tired or hungry or overworked, you're still going to find the time to put in, to do the grind that is required in order to finish your book. Be it a hundred pager or a thousand pager, there is a lot of work ahead of you. Before we get started on the five tips, I do have a little bit of maybe wisdom for you. Depends on if you consider it wisdom. Unless you're a journalist, with a deadline and a boss who's breathing down your neck about getting it done in time, you are the only person that's actually going to make this book happen. No one else is in charge of telling you to do it. You have to tell yourself that you have to do this now. All right, with that out of the way, let's go to point number one. Schedule your writing time. Every day is probably the best idea so that you can get a chunk done. Stephen King goes for 2,000 words every day. So he'll sit down, and until he's written 2,000 words, he does not get up and go and do something else. That may be too much for you, so you could start with 1,000 or even 500. 500 words a day done over a few months, that gets pretty high pretty quick. If you can't do every day, if that's just not in your schedule, or if you just, for some reason, can't manage to pull that off, weekly can work as well. There are some authors who get quite a lot of writing done because they schedule their Saturday or Sunday where just essentially they make a work day, like an eight-hour period or so, and they will just write for that entire time. If you can sit there and do that, fantastic. I myself have to do the little sprints over multiple days during the week. Anything beyond once a week is probably not enough. It's kind of like with exercise. You need to do it regularly to see improvement in your abilities as well as to see progress. If you are not putting in regular amounts of work, you're not going to be getting better as a writer, and the book is very slowly getting done, if at all getting done. Number two. Taking a break from writing is perfectly fine. Don't worry about it, as long as there's a valid reason for why you're doing it. I myself have taken multiple research breaks where I will just stop where I am in my draft and go off for a month, maybe, and do more reading about a specific thing that I need to know more about before I can continue, whether it be an aspect of the world building, an aspect of the psychology of my character, whatever it might be, there can be valid reasons as long as you're still working on the book. Taking research breaks is fine. Or any other kind of break. If there's something difficult going on in your life and you just cannot do it, all right, say that, okay, until the end of this week, because I know that this crazy thing will be over by Wednesday, or whatever day it is, I'm not going to do it, but as soon as this thing's done, I'm, ba I'm back into it. And you have to stick with it. You have to have that commitment and actually get back into it, because that's the thing with stopping and taking breaks, it can be hard to get back into it. That's why of often you will see people suggesting that you just write every day until the book is done. That's not always possible, but there are reasons why that is potentially optimal, unless something comes up and you need to consider it for a while, sit with it, maybe you're a bit more of a pantser, and something crazy happened out of nowhere that you did not see coming, 
And rather than, okay, no, no, this doesn't work. This is, this makes things too complicated. I have to trash it and redo it and do something that I can control. You could just sit back and say, okay, now that this has happened, what are the consequences? That actually happened to me quite recently. And it's in, in my book and it's, it's exciting to kind of try to figure out what's happening next because of this new event as long as it makes sense as long as it's not completely out of nowhere as long as you can easily or even with some effort weave it in so that overall it, it is still logical there is still a follow through where you came from to get to that crazy point it makes sense that that's a potential thing that could happen and then afterward there needs to be necessary consequences that are realistic to at least a certain extent realistic to the world that you have going on at the very least another thing that a lot of people will suggest is number four write what you know this is especially true for nonfiction. it's usually a good idea to discuss things that you're familiar with to a certain extent. It makes no sense for someone who has lived their entire life landlocked to write a book about being a fisherman on a ship in the middle of the ocean. It makes no sense to do that. If you've been landlocked, consider writing a landlocked story. This moves us right into number four, which is what if you have been landlocked, but you really do want to write that fishing story? Write what you don't know. Do some research. Figure it out. If you have been landlocked your whole life and you really do want to tell the ocean-based story, do research. The best type of research would be to go spend some time on a ship, maybe even do some fishing on that ship. But if that's not an option for you, there are plenty of resources online. You can go online, ask questions. You can go online, read things, figure out what it's like on a ship, the different parts of a ship, the different techniques of fishing. Maybe you've never been fishing, but you really want your main character to be really good at it. Do your reading. Watch some stuff about it. Documentaries, whatever. Download as much information into your brain as possible. Write down as much as you think is necessary, maybe more than you think is necessary. And then you can go and reference that stuff later. The advice of write what you know, again, kind of like earlier advice in this video, there's a point to it. There's a reason why that's there, but don't feel too limited. And finally, Number five, you got to find your own way. It's really that simple. Previous tips have been a little contradictory, you might have noticed, and that's because it's just advice. It's just some tips that you can use, that you can follow, you can test it out, see if it works for you. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If it does, fantastic. Stick with something. If you find information through us or through somebody else, if that works for you, great. Do it. Maybe you find that you really need a solid outline before you can start writing. The outliners in the author tube community and the author coaching sphere overall will say you have to outline. You have to do it this way or you cannot do the book. The book will suck or you'll never finish it or all these things. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then, of course, the pantsers on the other side, who don't outline at all or very little and just see what happens, they'll, all, they'll say, more often than not, you gotta just do that. The outline isn't gonna get you where you wanna go. As soon as you start writing, you're gonna fly off of that outline and do something totally different. And for them, that is true. But you have to figure out which one you are. And there's a lot of other tools and tricks and all these other different things that are exactly like that. The only way you're going to figure out how to write your book is by writing your book. And whatever method you find for yourself, that is the method that you need to use. There's advice, there's tools, there's different things that all these other people have figured out how to do. Test them out. Don't just from scratch try to figure it out all on your own because you're just going to do a lot of trial and error and trial and error 
and trial and error. But don't stick with something just because someone said you have to. That's simply not the case. It, this is a creative process. This is not chemistry, where if you do this process incorrectly, as according to the manual, you're not going to make the correct thing, and you might blow yourself up depending on what you're working with. This is a creative endeavor, whether you're doing a, a novel, or a memoir, or self-help, or whatever you might be doing. Children's book. It's creativity. It's going to be a process of figuring out what you want to do with it and how to get yourself there. And that's about it. Overall, you need to sit with what you're doing and try stuff out and find what works for you. Hopefully, you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more content from the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Also, go ahead and share this video with your friends, your family, other authors or aspiring authors that you might know that might find this information valuable. Thanks. See you next time.